Yellowstone Volcano Old Faithful live webcam, we see a beautiful surprise. A bison herd comes grazing in the area of our live webcam. We have a profuse amount of steam from the geysers around Old Faithful. Here we are at the uh, Upper Geyser Basin. Oops, that happens sometimes. Oops, okay, that's my fault. Look at that, that's amazing. That is amazing. That's a very strong eruption. This is not Old Faithful, by the way. Uh, but we do have strong eruptions in this basin uh, minutes before the steamboat guy, um, Old Faithful erupts. That's because this whole area is filling up with water. And uh, this is our, I just now turned it on and I've, I haven't seen this for days. So that was a very pleasant surprise. We've, we saw this very close up. This new camera pans to areas that uh, they feel we should have a nice look at. And that was really something. And there's something more here on this side as you can see some other one here I don't see any people walking around the pathways what's happened okay these are them right here this is this is a snow covered path as you can see here right here along that way behind here did I do that again all right it just changed now it just changed. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that steam. That's amazing. It goes off by itself every few seconds for some reason. Here we go. That is uh, a very abundant amount of steam there in this, uh, this area they're showing us. I don't usually see it this... Uh, It stopped again. Okay, and as we we usually see steam increasing uh, in the area just before a steamboat, um, I keep saying that, sorry, uh, Old Faithful erupts. Amazing. Amazing. Cloud cover, as we can see. It's not very sunny, but that's okay. We still have a very good view of the uh, geyser eruptions there steaming even the little ones here right here as you can see everything is steaming We haven't had many big earthquakes in the area. They're normal, background levels. And um, as we know, it sits in the northwest corner of Wyoming, overlapping Montana and Idaho. And uh, the caldera that's currently there was formed about 640,000 years ago. We've had super eruptions there 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and the 640,000 years ago was a double eruption about 170 years apart. And uh, that le is left, has left the caldera that we see there today. And on the southeastern part of the caldera lies Yellowstone Lake. Uh, the magma chamber under Yellowstone is very big. Of course, it's a super volcano, and it's not a regular volcano. And uh, because of the amount of carbon dioxide that's being emitted from Yellowstone every single day on a daily basis, they found that an estimated 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide comes off Yellowstone every day. And because of that huge amount, they thought that it could not have been just the magma chamber that they were aware of underneath. It must have been something more. 
And that's why they examined and they, do, they did more studying and they found that they, there is a huge magma reservoir sitting under the magma chamber. And uh, under that is a plume. That plume goes down to Baja, California. And that plume also supplies the west coast, the high threat volcanoes with magma. And also this part here towards uh, uh, northeast, going along the line northeast of Baja, California. And uh, that is a huge amount, it's anywhere between two and a half to four times bigger than what they thought it would be in size, as far as uh, the magma chamber and reservoir underneath. There we go. That's a lot of steam. A lot of steam today. Uh, in the past month, according to uh, Volcano Hazards Program, Yellowstone Earthquake Monitor, we had about 97 quakes. And um, basically, the uh, one of the biggest ones was 2.6 on the uh, east of the caldera. That was 11th of January. And uh, 2.1 on the uh, 19th. But uh, there are a lot of them that are on the northwest towards Montana that we see, Butte, Montana. And uh, towards the deformation of Yellowstone, well, it's obviously always being tracked by GPS systems, global positioning systems, and receivers and benchmarks on uh, solid monuments employed at Yellowstone to precisely record their positions for days, months, and years providing the velocity in centimeters per year. The velocity fields map spatial variations of the ground due to volcanic processes as magma and hydrothermal transport as fault motions related to earthquakes. So uh, you could understand how much water there is coming under here. And the theory is that uh, the tectonic plate that uh, lies underneath the, the Pacific plate, lying underneath the North American plate. That slab um, allows ocean water to come in into areas there, but also rain. And I don't think it's just rain and snow melt, um, because you would have this profuse amount of steaming in other areas that have rain and snow melt. But um, they, they claim that it's the ocean water coming in. And uh, somehow, um, in this way, recycling itself coming off a of steam from the geysers in Yellowstone. And also, a lot of that, that's not enough water coming out. They say a lot of that water goes into making very um, runny magma, lava flows, as we saw in, for example, Hawaii. That lava flow in the 2018 eruption in Kilauea was at some points going at 18 miles an hour. It was so fast it looked like a river because it had a lot of water in it. So, deformations, the GPS stations are maintained by the Plate Boundary Observatory via UNAVCO, and I'm reading from the Yellowstone uh, Monitoring via Volcano, Hazard, Volcano Hazards Program, USGS, and um, transmitted by radio and satellite links to various groups around the world for recording and processing and the monitoring interface are processed by UNAVCO. And uh, going into the steamboat geyser, what's happening with steamboat geyser? Geyser outlet channels and uh, for some reason, I'm trying to find the, um, okay, let's go to Steamboat Geyser. Steamboat Geyser, where are you? Okay, it's, um, it last erupted around, uh, very strange, about uh, the 18th. 12th to 18th, it was basically uh, 12th, no, uh, 10th or 11th, 11th. Of January to 18th, it was basically steady, and now it's building up again. 
I guess that any day now it will erupt again. Steamboat geyser. As we know, this started um, its uh, activity around March of 2018. It's at the eastern edge of Norris Back Basin. Rarely has major eruptions, but when they occur, they're powerful. And in these events, columns of water reach heights of 300 feet, 100 meters, followed by Rosh steam phase that can last for over a day, loudly discharging steam nearly 600 feet into the atmosphere. The water is neutral to alkali and rich in chlorine. Small minor eruptions can occur every few minutes, and the temperature is measured in the outlet channel downhill from geyser's vent. And Steamboat has proven more active during the 21st century than any time since the early 1980s. Between 1991 and 2000, there were no large eruptions. Several occurred between 2000 and 2014, and a phase of frequent eruption began March of 2018, as we know, and it's been ongoing on just about every week since then. And we know that that's the biggest geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser. It's here in Yellowstone. And Yellowstone houses over 60% of the world's geysers. And it has over 10,000 geothermal areas. And I would venture to say they're still mapping all these things. It's such a huge area to cover. And uh, most of the year it's under snow. Uh, I mean, they start their field work in May. And for example, when they went back this May to start um, maintaining the... Um, their, instru and their instruments, their seismometers and the GPS things, they had to dig them out under four and a half feet of snow. And that was in May, so you can imagine. They don't have that much time, it's so far up, they don't have that much time to uh, do their field work in. Plus they have the, <laughs> the added advantage of having to uh, uh, be careful of the uh, bears, the wolves, the bison, and the the elk and the local uh, animals. That's really, look at this, this is really profuse, isn't it? I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it this active. Very strange. And it's nice, it doesn't seem to be breezy, so. Yeah, the steam is bellowing nicely. The hydrology, this has to do with the hydrology systems. Heat and volcanic gases rising from Yellowstone magma chamber and warm the salty water that occupies fractured rocks above the Yellowstone magma chamber. That brine, in turn, transfers its heat to overlying fresh groundwater, which is recharged by rainfall and snow melt from the surface, they said here. The superheated water can flash to steam, propelling both steam and hot water into the surface as a geyser. Steamboat, located in Norris Geyser Basin, is one of Yellowstone's most famous geysers, and Yellowstone Park staff recently began monitoring the outlet channel of Steamboat Geyser. Now here's a... Oh, there they are. Oh, I love, I love watching... Oh, look at them. They're trying to get a drink of water or something. <sighs> is he going to go in? There's another one in the back. Number four is, is up here. Oh, it's going through. I just love that. This is worth the whole thing. Oh, it's swimming across. Oh, little sweetie. Oh, where are their little young ones? Where are their young ones? Oh, he's trying to make sure he's got a strong footing in there. And they're following each other. Where are they going? Where are they going? Oh, be careful. There you go. Okay. Uh, oops, it gives you the idea of how shallow it is. Okay. Maybe it's even warm. That would be nice. It was nice and warm. Yeah. Where are they going? Oh, that's so beautiful. I was <laughs> kidding. Uh, maybe they want to come closer to some geyser area so they can keep warm. Just like, this reminds me of the, uh, oh, he's digging for something. Is he digging for something? Um, 
it reminds me of the macaque monkeys in Japan. You know, the ones that we see sitting. I should do a little video on that. The ones that we see sitting in these geyser pools, the uh, hot hot spring baths, <laughs> and this the pools are steaming up around them, and they got little snow crystals around their fur and their faces, but they have a beautiful time sitting in the hot spring baths. Uh, those macaque monkeys in Japan. This is what it reminds me of. I hope they have. I don't have too much of a difficult time trying to find food because everything is so much under snow here. And um, you know, there have there have been times when uh, when the uh, carbon dioxide, uh, you know, it stays sort of down towards the ground level. Uh, the carbon dioxide emissions have um, caused them to have uh, you know the toxic carbon dioxide poisoning, and they have found uh, some you know, small herds in areas and they figured that it had to do with the sudden emission of carbon dioxide or toxic volcanic gases that caused them to to bring about their demise. That was years ago, of course. It was like, uh, what, was 2013 or something? 2006, I can't remember. Look at them. Oh, they're finding something there. That must be warm. That's why there's no snow over it. That must be a warm area. And there's another one in the back. There's another one in the back. Up there. Amazing. Amazing. That's so beautiful. Well, at least they they find something to eat there in the areas that are bare of snow. Amazing. Okay, so I'll leave links below for you for this. You can also. Watch it once in a while. I haven't seen any other animals besides bison. I mean, I haven't seen bears or elk or anything um, when the um, live cam is showing us animals around this area. It's basically bison that we see. That's beautiful. I wonder where their little ones are. Okay, thank you for your support. Please uh, subscribe, share, and comment, and hit the bell for more updated videos. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.